So for this movie review, we're going to do The Conjuring 2, The Enfield. I tend to believe a memory will stick with you when it's surprising, when it's good, or when it's really, really bad. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Before we dive into The Conjuring 2, I wanted to take a step back and remember what The Conjuring was. Now The Conjuring came out in July of 2013 and so The Conjuring was such a massive hit not only with the box office with the reviews, ratings, I mean just all around there was not really many people that would say The Conjuring was a bad film. For a horror movie to come out in the middle of summer that was very daring and also for Warner Brothers to believe in James Wan to do this high budget horror movie. The Conjuring is one of those movies that sticks with me, not only on the surprise element, but on a great element. I can remember everything about seeing this movie. I can remember the theater I went to, I can remember who I went with to go see this movie, and I can remember the feeling of coming out having this joy of finally I have seen something in horror cinema that is a step above everything that we have been seeing up until that point. And so The Conjuring for me was that high of a bar. This leads me to The Conjuring 2. So we are back with our famous paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren and this time their relationship is stronger and I love that element of these two characters throughout both movies. Unlike the first Conjuring which kicks off with Annabelle and I think is a fantastic opener that leaves you to want to know more about Annabelle, we now have the uh, paranormal investigation of the Amityville. Now if you do not know what Amityville uh, is, it is a sort of property based upon uh, these murders that happened in a house. The husband was saying that he was possessed to do these murders or something like that. Uh, you can look it up and there's many different movies that come out. I highly recommend the 2005 Amityville Horror with Ryan Reynolds in it. I thought that was a very good movie. But so in The Conjuring 2, it feels very different off the bat where you thought maybe this investigation was going to be a little bit more about Amityville because Amityville is such a character itself, it's the house, it's everything that happens in that house. You kind of wanted to spend a little bit more time with it, kind of just skip forward to basically it already happened, they're investigating whether it was a hoax or not. This was sort of a lead up for us to see a demon character that is well loved. I kind of scratch my head at it. I get the, you know, the, the, the vibrance. It's kind of daunting to see this character at the end of the hallway. It's visually, like, cool. It's a cool concept. But the more I saw it, the more I kind of just stared at it and made me think of Marilyn Manson in a nun outfit. I mean, there's no other way I can put that. Um, even James Wan himself stated in interviews that he did not have the design for the nun character thought up until about three months before the movie was, you know, set to come to theaters. That they had to go do reshoots and digitally, uh, you know, add, especially when Ed is doing the painting of the nun. It's actually whatever the normal demon was going to be. With, uh, I think he said it's a demon with horns. 
and that was going to be the normal thing but they kind of digitally went in there and scrubbed over it and put the painting of the nun. The nun has one particular scene in which I thought was handled very well as far as the scares, as far as the creepiness and that's what I love about The Conjuring is creepiness. It doesn't have to be jump scares and I'll get to that later but it doesn't have to be those. It can just be a subtle creepiness. That's the thing about The Conjuring. In this first hour, we're spending our time with Ed and Lorraine's story versus what's going on in the uh, infield over in England. But we have those characters, sorry about that, but we have those characters uh, about a family that is possessed or sort of having some trickery ghost toying around with the kids just because he's a cranky old man that lived in the chair. And so that's kind of another problem I have with the movie. And for the story of the family in Enfield, to me, it just, to use the English point, it was kind of just rubbish to me. Uh, I was not enjoying them. Um, to me, they were just kind of boring to watch. And maybe that's due in part of the, the, the way the jump scares were handled. To me, The Conjuring 1, when you go back and watch it, and do believe me, I did my research. Right after seeing this movie, I waited the next day, I watched The Conjuring again. And I haven't seen The Conjuring in quite a while. Probably like maybe a few years I haven't watched it. So I went ahead and watched it over again, just to make sure maybe Maybe I was reading too much into that movie. But no, The Conjuring still surprised me yet again years later. It still had me on the edge of my seat. You know, all the scares that it provides. That's the difference between one and two to me. The Conjuring 2 feels like because it was a sequel, they tried to amp it up more. But to me, it ended up being sort of a cross between uh, insidious films and paranormal activity films and if you combine those two this is kind of what you got in this film the first one handles the scares so well there's they're sort of set pieces in a way if you want to think about it like the the clap clap game when someone does that it should instantly take you back to the conjuring exorcism in the basement with the levitating chair and the daughter's hair you know slowly gets pulled up and then she gets yanked across the room. Not so much just a jump scare or a loud noise, but a lingering, terrorizing kind of feeling. And that happens throughout The Conjuring. Now in The Conjuring 2, there's a lot of kind of like jump scares and a lot of uh, same tactics used. Tell me if you did notice in The Conjuring 2, they do this whole I think it's at least two to three times that trick is used and normally it wouldn't bother me if it was maybe used early on and then maybe near the end sort of thing. Watch this clip and tell me you wouldn't think that would be The Conjuring 3 if you didn't already know it was Insidious. See? You couldn't tell much of a difference, huh? It looked just like The Conjuring 2, right? The runtime for the first movie is about an hour, I want to say an hour and 53 minutes, versus The Conjuring 2, which is two hours and I think two hours and 14 minutes is what it is. Damn! That's, that's pretty ballsy to make a horror movie in the middle of summer that is over two hours. For a horror movie that in the first hour, it's kind of hit and miss and it kind of bores you, it needed to be cut down, I think, quite a lot. On to another note, um, the whole thing that surrounds the infield uh, haunting, basically, is that there was this whole notion of whether it was real or not. Whether the kids were faking it, the whole family was faking it, and it's very subtle kind of mentioned in The Conjuring 2. For me, it would have been just ballsy just to end the movie right when Ed and Lorraine leave. 
of course, because the general audience wants, you know, I'm sure either Warner Brothers or James Wan wanted to please them. So he went ahead and tacked on like the extra, I don't know, what was it, like almost 25 minute scene at the end just to ramp things up for the audience to be like, oh, this is amazing. You know, it had a great ending. I've talked about her before, Spooky Astronauts. Make sure to go ahead and check out her review as well. She mentioned a TV mini series called The Enfield Haunting. Make sure to definitely go check that out. I think you will be surprised about that. It's a uh, British uh, TV mini series involving the 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 actual investigation of um, the Enfield uh, haunting. And it's based upon the original investigation that happened, I think, in the 70s or 80s or whatever. But that story, I thought, was well better uh, written as far as the family and as far as the characters involved around the haunting. You know, those are my points about The Conjuring 2. Will I remember this movie, you know, a few years down the line? Probably not really. And I just want to challenge all the people that love horror out there to not love it for the general fact that other people love it. You can be an individual. You can say some. there are some negative things about this movie. Don't be afraid of being bullied by those who love horror and they want to love everything that's horror. And trust me, I've seen it on social media, most notably Instagram. And I'm not calling out any names of anybody because that's not what this channel is about. It's not about negativity unless it comes to movies and theme parks and certain things that I can feel is justified to call things out on. But I think what comes with horror is the respect that you love it but at the same time, you can call BS on some things or you can say, hey, this is not good and we demand as horror fans for something better. I challenge you guys, since most of you out there have seen it, go back and watch the first one and tell me if you notice anything different. Am I just crazy? Or do you notice anything different between the two movies? Did you still like the first one as much or do you like the second one? even more now. Also in the comment section, leave your thoughts about The Conjuring 2. I want to know what did you like about it? Did you like it over the first one? Follow me on social media. You can tweet at me. I love talking with anybody about horror movies, theme parks, whatever. So you can follow me on that one and um, make sure to hit that thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already for more content like this, more movie reviews on the way. And as always, thank you for watching. Till next time, peace. Shh. Don't let the fans know. They're, they're, they will kill me. The Conjuring gets... I'm gonna say... A six... To 7 out of 10 especially when it comes out on blu-ray I'm gonna check it out again just to kind of see maybe if it's a little better maybe time has grown with it and maybe I give it a higher score but for right now I'm gonna say from a 6 to 7 out of 10 anyway guys back to your program And James Wan also stated that he did not want to do the same movie twice because the first one had possession. Um, he didn't kind of want to dive too far into doing an exorcism and stuff like that because he already did that in the first one. But it's really strange when you go back and watch the first movie and you have the second movie in your mind because you start to see they're kind of parallel in some weird aspects. In the first movie, we see that it is Ed caring about Lorraine and he doesn't want her to go into the next case because he has a fear that whatever haunted her is going to come back and maybe possibly kill her or make even more of a damage on her life. 
And so in the second movie, we now have Lorraine being the protector of Ed in that she has a glimpse of something happening to Ed and she doesn't kind of want to do the case. She doesn't want to dive into any more cases because she has a fear of losing him. So in the first movie, we have Annabelle brought back into one particular scene uh, that is involving the daughter, just as much as in The Conjuring 2, we have a um, revisit, basically a scene visiting with the non-visiting uh, Lorraine at her house. Very parallel, once again, very similar, you know, in both of these movies. And it's also that we have a story in the first one, which is not so much about the daughter being possessed, um, but, you know, there is some trickery there, and then there's some trickery in the second one. Um, instead of it being the mom possessed like the first one, it's the daughter being possessed in the second one. Once again, James Wan, you didn't want to make the same movie, but when you think about it, they're kind of the same movie. Just one is, I think, better and directed better and handled better than the other one. But just something I noticed and I just wanted to mention that.